Hallelujah. I welcome every one of us in our various homes to this glorious Sunday service in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Divine Heights Bible Church, Abbey Okuta. Please, wherever you are, I want us to bow your heads as we pray. Oh God, we thank you for preserving each one of us from January to February to March to April to May to June to July and bringing us to this month of August. Today, oh God, we worship you. Our Father, you are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are our wonderful Savior. You are our great Deliverer. Oh God, we magnify you. Today, oh God, let us experience the manifestation of your presence in our various homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father and our God, in the course of this service, come and save souls. Amen. Jehovah God, in the course of this service, let healing take place. Amen. Our Father, in the course of this service, any bondage, that needs to be broken. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Today, O oh God, come to the devil, the master. Amen. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to sing this chorus to worship God. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah to you. One more time. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to all that glory belongs to you. All that glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Amen. Please pick your Bibles with me and open to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. As I read verse 19. Isaiah 43, I read verse 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We thank God for bringing us to the eighth month of the year, the month of August. Beloved, the figure eight, spiritually, 
stands for the new beginning. I pray for you today. May the Almighty begin a new thing in your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This month, God will do a new thing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the power of God, you will experience divine restoration of blessing in this month in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In this month of August, you are going to recover all the lost glory over the years in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The connection that will eradicate lack and poverty in your life and in your household, let it locate you this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree by the power of God that God will roll away all the reproach of your life and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I speak upon your life. Let disgrace be disgrace over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In this new month of August, shame shall be taught to honor in your life and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In this month of August, let there be divine restoration of all that you have lost in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I prophesy upon your life as you are saying amen. Receive the anointing to go forward with God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I speak to your life. May your life prove to the world that our God is real and our God is alive. In Jesus' mighty name I prayed. Amen. amen. Say this worship chorus with me. We bow down and worship Yahweh. 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 Yahweh. We Yahweh 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 Then sing my soul My God, oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the what thy and have me. 
I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy path throughout the universe display. Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. O Lua, et O B, et O B, O, et O B. O Lua, et O B, et O B, O, et O B. Cosenita le fi chakawere o etobi. Cosenita le fi chakawere o etobi. Oluwa etobi oloba oluwa.
baba, koto baba, aini baba, aini baba, aini baba, koto baba, aini baba, ni baba, koto baba, aini baba, koju baba long. Oh my Jesus Say hey oh my Jesus I say hey oh my Jesus Oh hey oh my Jesus Been around the world Searching for a miracle I found no one Nobody like you Been to many places Searching for a better life I found no one Nobody like you, nobody like you Help my Jesus I say help my Jesus no. My Jesus Elim, 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 Elim I say, somebody help my Jesus, oh. Now see. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, and as we worship you, Lord, come and change our life. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, and now we worship you. Lord, come and change our lives. Arise, 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 arise. Take your place. to thank God for bringing us to a new month, the month of new beginning. Today is the first Sunday in the month of August, so we are here to praise the Lord because God has preserved our lives and our God has been very good. We want to sing unto the Lord from our hymn pamphlet. We want us to open to hymn 13. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, except the Lord guides. Nobody knows the way. 
He is the way, He is the truth, and the life. And we need to be guided. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. have a lot of obstacles and it's only Christ Jesus that can help us know where to go and how to go about it. The title of at, uh, some ministration today is Oh Brother Life's Journey Beginning. Oh Brother Life's Journey Beginning. Oh Brother Life's Journey is Beginning. Be watchful. Take courage. God will see you through.
God calls for you are choosing. Be and as be faithful and wise. Remember the parts I be for you. I'm for thy attention's invite. But once needed destruction, the other. Give you the grace to say no. Oh, brother, you not to temptation, no matter what others may do. Stand firm in the strength of the master. Be loyal, be faithful and true. He trial will make you the stronger. If you in the name of the Lord, fight manfully under the leader. Obey Follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you the grace to say no. the voice of the spirit that whisper so gently within God calls you to enter his service to live from him here day by day how shall by and by in the glory that never shall vanish away God help you to follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you the grace to say no. Oh, brother, life's journey begins. Cause you have chosen Be honest, be faithful and wise Remember to butter before me And follow the attention's invite But one little thing to destruction The other to joy and delight you to follow his father and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you the grace to say no. God help you to follow his father and serve him wherever you go. Tempted my sister, God give you the grace to say no. God help you to follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted.
bread, oh bread, God give you the grace to say no. of the Almighty God. Amen. My brother, my sister, we are on a journey. We are on a journey. God will give you the grace to follow the banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, let us pray. King of kings, Lord of lords, we want you to come and speak unto us today. Amen. Teach us your way. Amen. Guide us from above. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Amen. for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want you to pick your Bibles with me. And please open your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings chapter 30. 2 Kings chapter 30. I'm going to read from verse 8 to verse 12. 2 Kings chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 8 to verse 12. 2 Kings chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 8 to verse 12. <clears throat> and he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Adam. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Adam, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Adam went down to meet him. Beloved, I am speaking on what I call when you get to the crossroad of life. When you get to the crossroad of life. When you get to the crossroad of life, life is a journey. Life is a journey. The journey of life has some similarities. This car journeys. Like in the physical journey, in, in the journey of life, there are straight roads. There are bends. There are junctions. There are bus stops. Beloved, in the journey of life, there are also bus stops. 
Let me tell you about the bus stop of the journey of life. The bus stops of the journey of life, there are those places where people stop to rest in this journey. In Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11, verse 31, is the story of a man called Terah. He was the father of Abraham. He took Abraham in son, Lot in his grandson, Sarai, his daughter-in-law, to go on a journey to a place called Canaan, a place we know as the promised land. But instead of going to Canaan, that promised land, Terah got to Haran, a bus stop, and he settled there. In Genesis 11, verse 32, we read that Terah died in Haran. He died at the bus stop. He was yet to get to the promised land. He stopped and settled at the bus stop. He did not reach his own destination. I pray for you today, you will not stop at the wrong bus stop of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the power of God, you will fulfill your own destiny and you will reach your destination in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, it is not only bus stops that we encounter in the journey of life. There are what I call side roads in the journey of life. If you ought to be traveling straight and you branch to the side roads, you will be distracted from your journey. In the book of First King, chapter 13, it's a story about a man who was identified simply in First Kings chapter 13, verse 1, as a man of God from Judah, of Judah, out of Judah. A man of God out of Judah. This man prophesied against the altar in Bethel. And when the king, King Jeroboam, saw him. Had him, he stretched his hand and ordered him to be arrested. The hand that Jeroboam stretched against him became electro electrified, elect 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 electrocuted, and dried up immediately. And the king could not move his hand again because he stretched his hand to a man of God. It was not the turn of the king to start to beg him, please pray to God again that my hand be restored. I don't know why this prophet, this man of God prayed. He prayed and the man's hand was restored. Beloved, after that restoration, in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 7, the king now invited him to come with him to refresh himself in his house. Side road. The man of God refused. Side road. Why? It was an invitation to the side road. God had told him not to turn aside at all. God had told him not to branch into any other road. Indeed, God asked him that the way you followed into that city should not be the way that you will take when you are going out. That invitation of that king was an invitation to the destruction of the side road. Beloved, in this journey of life, there are roads of destruction. Hear me very well this, today. Those friends that are praising you, those friends that are singing your praises, if you listen to them, you are listening to the side road of life. Those enemies that are raining accusation against you, 
They want to distract your life. Those people who are accusing you for what you have not done, if you wait to pay them attention, you are, you are being distracted to the side, side road of life. I pray for you and I today, enemies that do not want you to make heaven, they shall fail over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatsoever Satan had planned to distract you from this Christian life, let that plan of Satan fail over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, what I've been telling us is this. Life is a journey. Don't settle at the wrong bus stop. Life is a journey. Refuse to be diverted to a side road. You and I, we are in the journey to heaven. Let heaven be your focus. Beloved, apart from bus stops, apart from destructive side roads, one other feature that you and I, we encounter in this journey of life are the crossroads of life. Crossroads of life. What is a crossroad? What is a crossroad? Physically speaking, a crossroad is a place where two or more roads cross each other. A place where two or more roads cross each other. If you do not know your way, and if you have no guide or a navigator, and you get to a crossroad, you can be confused. You may not know which way to take. That is physical crossroad. There are some things, beloved, that are spiritual. Even about our physical crossroads. The Yorubas call it Orita Meta or Orita Meri. Satanic people, they see the physical crossroad as a meeting place or point of some demons or spirits. Do you agree to that? In many of our towns, you can wake up in the morning to find that somebody had brought a pot with palm oil, cola nut, even money, he brought it to the crossroad under the cover of darkness. Why? They believe that some demons will come and eat that evil sacrifice. That is not your own Lord if you're a child of God. I had a testimony of a man in Lagos. He stayed late in his office and decided to return home just before midnight. But on his way home, his vehicle developed a problem. He needed the attention of a mechanic to have midnight. <laughs> He was sure that he couldn't get a mechanic at that at such an hour. And it was not wise for him to abandon his car at that place just before he crossed the road. Do you know what my brother, my friend did? He decided to sleep inside the car that night. But around 2 a.m., he was woken up by his sound. He saw a man in a white wrapper and the man was before him, moving towards the crossroad. The man was carrying a goat. The legs of the goat were tied. And my brother was in the car, watching what was happening. Gently, he lowered the glass. And he could hear the voice of the man who was moving to the crossroad. He noticed that the man was making some incantations. Suddenly, he heard the man 
shouting out the name of a person. And he said, you so, 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 so person, as this goat is tied at this crossroad, so is your own life. Is your life tied? Ah. And my brother in the car, listen again. The man said, as the life of this girl will be terminated today at this crossroad, so will your life, the life of social person be tied, be, be terminated. Your destiny will be, the destiny of that person will be terminated. Our friend looked at it as if, could he be sleeping? It was a real life show. Our friend was watching him. Suddenly he saw the man use his back to move away from the crossroad, went far away and entered into a vehicle and drove off. Wow. That, my friend, must be a bold man. He came out of his car, went to the crossroad to see what the man had done. He saw the goat tied. Thank God the goat was still alive. My friend... Used his, he started to pray some prayers. He started to pray in tongues. I believe that the Holy Spirit of God planted him there for a divine purpose. After praying in tongues, something came upon him. It is called the anointing. Suddenly, he got out of the, of the goat, untied the goat. And when he untied the goat, my brother said, you that person that this man mentioned, who has been tied in this place, be released in the name of Jesus. My brother cried. He said, you God, I will release you. And I shall release you now. Anybody that the enemy had planned to kill at this junction, that person is released in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, he kicked the goat. And he said, as I release you now, I cancel the death sentence that has been pronounced upon a man on this crossroad. Beloved, that night, God used that brother to deliver somebody from the bondage of the crossroad. I pray for you as you are listening to me today. Any sacrifice of darkness, take it to a crossroad to trouble your life let that sacrifice be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any demon, someone to trouble you at the crossroad, let that demon, let that evil spirit be paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, say amen very well. Any sacrifice of, the, of wickedness, carry it to the crossroad because of any member of your family. They fell in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They fell in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not enter into any bondage or the crossroad in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Beloved, you can see how spiritual a physical crossroad is. Apart from the physical crossroad, beloved, I've come to tell you today that there is the crossroad of life. There is the of life. We call that crossroad of life a crossroad that every one of us get to at one time or the other in your life. Every one of us, we get to the crossroads of life. Indeed, let me tell you many crossroads of life in your own life. Many of them. What is the crossroad of life? What is the crossroad of life? Hear me very well. Number one is a point in your life, a point in your life where you have to make an important decision about what to choose or where to go in life. 
I'm sure you got to that place before. A point in your life when you have to take an important decision about what or who to choose and where to go in life. If you have got there before in your life, say amen. amen. Beloved, number two, the crossroad of life is a point of life where you need to decide whether to go to the right or to the left, to go forward or backward or to remain where you are. I will repeat, it's a point in life where you need to decide whether to go to the right or to the left or to move forward or backward or to remain where you are. If you've got to that type of point in your own life, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Number three, beloved, a crossroad of life is a place where you need to make critical decisions that can affect the whole of your life. Every one of us gets there. You get to a place in life where you need to make a critical decision that can decide the whole of your life. Crossroad of life. A crossroad of life is a place of decision. Destiny decision. That can dictate whether you will succeed or you will fail in destiny. Destiny decision is a place of destiny decision. In the passage we read at the beginning of this message, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 8 to 12, Jehoram, the son of Ahab, who had become the king of Israel, went over to Jehoshaphat, a godly king who was ruling over Judah, and totally went to the king of Edom, said, I have an enemy that I want to conquer. Come and join me to go and fight against him, the king of Moab. So all these three kings took their armies. They went to battle. But in verse 9, they had a problem. That problem with we decide whether they will move forward to that battle or they will reverse. There was no water for their army and their cattle were thirsty because there was no water. They also did not know which way to go in that battle, whether to go to the right or to go to the left. Beloved, they were at their own crossroad. They did not know what to do. Thank God for King Jehoshaphat who knew God. In verse 11, Jehoshaphat asked a question. Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him. And suddenly, one of the servants of the king of Israel answered, said, here is Elijah, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water in the hand of Elijah. Beloved, when you get to your own crossroad, what do you do? 
when you get to that place in life where you do not know which way to choose, which way to go, what do you do? That's an important question that you and I need to ask ourselves today. At the crossroad of life, Jehoshaphat asked a question. Is there not a prophet of the Lord in this place that we may inquire of God on the way to go? At his own crossroad, Jehoshaphat wanted to inquire from God. I'm going to ask you again this morning. Beloved, when you get to your own crossroad, what do you do? In my own life, I have passed through many crossroads in life. I believe that you too have come across many crossroads of life in this journey. in your life when you need to take a decision on which school to go, which course to study, the point of crossroad. That time in your life when you are wondering which work will I do in this my life, I believe as you are listening to me, you've got there before. That was a crossroad. That point in your life for those who are married, when you do not know who to marry, beloved, it was a crossroad. Beloved, that time in your life when you need to take a decision either to remain in where you are or to further your education, that too was a crossroad. That time in your life when enemies rose up against you and you don't know what to do in life, what to do. Beloved, that too was a crossroad. The Bible has records of people of God who got to crossroads. I will tell you some of them. The first person I'm going to tell you about is Jacob. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. When Jacob wrestled with an angel at Peniel, it was his own crossroad. Beloved, thank God he took the right decision at his own crossroad. Thank God he was victorious at his own crossroad. Beloved, right decisions and victories at your own crossroad will help you to prosper in life. Isaac, the son of Jacob, also got to his own crossroad in Genesis chapter 26. He was living in a city called Jera. And there was famine in that city. And Isaac wanted to emigrate to the America of that time. He wanted to emigrate to the Australia of that time. He wanted to emigrate to Egypt. Why? He was at a crossroad. Thank God for Isaac, he knew God. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. God spoke to Isaac at his own crossroad. Genesis 26, let me read from verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Jera. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not into 
dwell in the land which I will tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. God appeared unto Isaac at his own crossroad. God gave him divine direction, divine guidance at his own crossroad. I pray for you as you are listening to me today. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, we guide you at your own crossroad in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Savior Jesus also got to his own crossroad in Matthew chapter 26 from verse 36 to 42. That was the time he was struggling with, own, with own, his own soul in the garden of Gethsemane. He was at his own crossroad. Was he going to submit himself to be sacrificed? Was he going to shed his own blood for the sins of all mankind? Was he going to go through the pain and the punishment for you and I? Was he going to do the will of God his father? He submitted himself to do the will of the father. That was a crossroad. My brother, my sister, I'm sharing this with you today to let you know that all of us we pass through many crossroads in life. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13, 1 Samuel chapter 13, if you read it from verse 7 to verse 14, you will see a man called King Saul in a place called Gilgal. He was waiting with his people for a, a prophet called Samuel. Day two, Samuel did not show up. Day three, day four, day five, day six, people became impatient with Saul. Some of them would have been accusing him. I've been telling him, this prophet, go ahead. Do it. You can do it too. He's a man like you. Day seven, Samuel did not appear. And people started departing from Saul. That was a crossroad of life. That was a, King Saul was at a crossroad. Unfortunately, at his own crossroad, he allowed men to move him rather than God to move him. He went ahead to do the burnt offering which Prophet Samuel ought to do. And when Prophet Samuel appeared, he said, you have done foolishly. King Saul failed at the crossroad of life. Beloved, while I was preparing this message, God gave me two messages for two people. Listen to me now. God said, a woman will listen to this message. A woman that is listening to this message right now. You are the crossroad. You don't know whether to leave your husband's house or to stay. To stay. This is a crossroad for you. God is sending me to you now. Stay in your husband's house. The battle will soon be over. Amen. Amen. God also sent me a message to another woman. You have been looking for the fruit of the womb. That is a crossroad. You've been married for many years. And somebody is advising you. How long will you wait upon God for this fruit of the womb that is not forthcoming? 
Come, I will take you somewhere. God is sending me to that woman right now. That is another, your own crossroad of life. Can I tell you, this month of August is your month. Amen. This month is your month. This is the month where all you've been waiting for for so many years is manifesting. Don't listen to that evil advisor. Beloved, I've shared with you some biblical as, uh, cases of people at their own crossroad. The children of Israel, when they left the land of Egypt, they also got to their own crossroad. If you read Exodus chapter 14, from verse 9 to verse 13, the children of Israel saw the Egyptian pursuing them. They became very afraid. It was their own crossroad. At that crossroad, many of them started to blame Moses. Is it because there are no graves in Egypt? That is why you have taken us to the wilderness to kill us. Haven't we told you, Moses, that you should leave us in Egypt? Let us remain slaves forever. Statements, evil statements at the crossroad of life. Beloved, I will ask you again now, what are the things that you do when you get to the crossroad of life? What are the things you say to yourself when you get to the crossroad of life? Many of the children of Israel, except two of them, who left Egypt, couldn't get to the promised land. Why? They failed at the crossroad. They did the wrong things that they should not do at the crossroad of life. And that's why at this time, beloved, I want to share with you wrong things that people do at the crossroad. What are the wrong things that people do when they get to the crossroad of life? The wrong things that people do at the crossroad of life. Number one, beloved, people look for people to blame. They look for somebody to blame. It is that my brother in America who refused to send me money. It is that my who refused to steal government money to, to also send me. It is your wife, husband. Are you blaming somebody at your own crossroad? Number two thing, wrong thing that people do at the crossroad of life, they make negative confessions about their lives. You need to know what happened when some people are It was a crossroad for them. They will be saying out that their own life has ended. They will be telling the world that they cannot live again because somebody has gone. Crossroad of life. My brother, what do you do at the crossroad of your life? Number three wrong thing that people do at the crossroad of life is that they become afraid. They succumb to fear. The army of Pharaoh was coming behind them and the children of Israel became afraid. Crossroad. Number four, wrong thing that some people do at the crossroad of life is that they start to murmur against God. They murmur. Which type of God? I mean, why is God allowing this? 
Why is God allowing that? Things, four wrong things that people do at the crossroad of life. The fifth wrong thing that people do at the wrong at the crossroad of life is that they take rash decisions. They take rash decisions. Life at your own crossroad because of a your family. So that is I'm packing out. I cannot take it again. And did something wrong. Crossroad. You switch off your phone. You say you do for life. And you never have time to think about the future of your children. Crossroad of life. Beloved, people that you hear about will go to the lagoon to jump there to, to kill themselves. They commit suicide at their own crossroad. Are you listening to me at this time? You think that that is the end of your life. You want to give up. You want to take... Don't do it. It's a wrong action at the crossroad. That spirit asking you to give up because you don't know the way to go again. No. It's a wrong decision. So some people want, tend to commit suicide because they are the wrong road of life, wrong, wrong crossroad of life. Another wrong thing that people do at the crossroad of life is that they forget God. My brother, my sister, listen to me at this time. Are you at the cross of your own life? Have you forgotten God? There is nothing impossible for him to do. He has divine solution to that problem confronting your life. Number 19, that's a wrong thing. Number 9, wrong thing. That's what people do at the crossroad of life. Is that they resort in physical fighting. They look for an enemy. And slap that enemy. And at the end, it's not nothing. Beloved, let me share with you. After telling you the wrong things that people do at the crossroads of life, let me give you, share some advice with yourself and myself on what we should not do at the crossroad of life. Beloved, when you get to that crossroad of decision, what are the things you should not do? Number one, don't, do not rush into taking decisions. At that crossroad, beloved, do not rush into taking decisions. Number two, at that crossroad of life, don't act before you think. Do not act before you think. Beloved, you will get to that crossroad many times. Number three, at that crossroad of life, do not forget God and what God has done for you in the past. When you get to that crossroad of life, do not forget God 
and what God Almighty has done for you in the past. Are you at that crossroad at this time? I know that God is sending this message to some people for such a time as this. Number four. At that crossroad of life, beloved, be careful of the confessions of your mouth. Be careful of the confessions of your mouth. A couple wanted to emigrate to Canada. They went for a Canadian visa interview. They came back and they were not given. It was a crossroad in that family. The husband looked at the wife and said, you are the one that has given him me bad luck. Beloved, who are you blaming at your own crossroad? Number five thing that you should not do at your own crossroad, do not be afraid. Are you at that crossroad at this time? Don't be afraid. Number 16, that I would advise you not to do at the crossroad. Never ever should you seek for satanic help. Don't seek for any satanic help. Satanic agents who text people send you recharge card and say they mistakenly send it to you. Don't reply them. Don't connect yourself to them, even through your voice. Discard their number. Refuse to load it. Don't seek for any satanic help, including financial help. Beloved, number seven thing that you should not do at the crossroad of life Refuse to blame yourself or blame other people. And lastly, beloved, when you get to the crossroad of life, the last thing I will ask you not to do, do not take any decision without God. Do not take any decision without God. After I have told you what you should not do, permit me by sharing with you what you should do when you face the crossroad of life. What should you do when you face the Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways. Another translation says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the crossroad and see and ask, ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Beloved, when you get to the crossroad of your own life, what should you do? Listen to me very well. Number one, be calm. That passage I read says, stand still and look. At that crossroad of life, be calm. Number two, at that crossroad of life, think deep. 
Don't be a shallow thinker at your own crossroad. Think deep. It means think to the right, think to the left, think to the front, think backward, think up, think down. Think deep. Number three. When you get to that crossroad of life, call upon God in prayer. Call upon God in prayer. Jacob got to his own crossroad. He called upon God. Are you at the God is waiting on you, waiting for you to call. Should he go forward? Should he go backward? Should he put the children in the front? Or should he put the animals in the front? Crossroad. Thank God for Jacob. He started to bless God. My boo at that crossroad of life. Silence every other voice. That is contrary to the voice of God. Intentionally silence every other voice so that I can listen to the voice of God. I will tell you in the, at the crossroad of life, advisors will appear. Please silence their voices in your life. Tune yourself to, to, to the radio station, to the television, I mean, to the telephone system of God. I will advise you, whatever God tells you, write it down. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Isaiah 30, verse 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind it saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Beloved, God is real. God is alive. God speaks. And one of the places where God will speak to you is at your own crossroad. Number 16 that you can do at your own crossroad, beloved. Just like Jehoshaphat in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11. You can seek for godly counsel. Look for a man or woman of God, a true child of God. And seek divine counsel. Jehovah Shaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And this brings me to number seven thing that you should do when you get to the crossroad of life obey the voice of God. Obey the voice of God. Beloved, I will end up this message by asking you this question again. When you get to your own crossroad of life, what will you do? Wherever you are, I want you to rise up on your feet and sing this chorus with me. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. Holy Spirit, I look up to you. Help me. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I look up to you. Help me. 
I have no power, power of my own. I have no power of power of my own. I have no power power of my own. Holy Spirit, I look up to you. Help me. I have no power of my own. Beloved, what will you do when you get to the crossroad of life? I want you to talk to God. I still want that something to be on, yes? You will talk to God. Say, oh God, I do not know the way. Come and show me the way to go in life. In the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer right now. Say, oh God, I do not know the way. Come and show me the way to go in life. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, I do not know the way. Come and show me the way to go in life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are listening to me at this particular time, and you look at your life, and you notice that you've taken the wrong decision, you look at your life, you have not gone in the way of God. God is sending me to you now to tell you that there is still hope for you. If only you will surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. So whoever is listening to this message at this time, you know that your life is not right with God. You can make your way right with God today by closing your eyes and asking Jesus Christ to come into your life. I want to help you. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Forgive me all my sins. Today, I come unto you. Come into my life. Come and be my Lord. Come and be my Savior. I accept you as my Savior, as my Lord today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, now I know that all of us can pray the next set of prayers we want to pray. Pray this prayer. Beloved, we have some prayers to pray and I want to be very sharp with each one of them. Say, oh God, my Father, oh God, my Father. In, this of life, in this journey of life, help me to walk with you. In the name of Jesus, oh God, my Father, in this journey of life, help me to walk with you. In the name of Jesus, oh God, my Father, in this journey of life, come and help me to walk with you. In the name of Jesus, oh God, my Father, in this journey of life, help me to walk with you. Help me to walk with you. Help me to walk with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I've told you that. Many of us have got to the crossroad of life. We still have many crossroads of life to pass through in life. Many of them are still ahead of us. That's why this prayer is for every one of us. Say, oh God. Oh God. When I get to the crossroad of life, appear and guide me in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father. Whenever I get to the crossroad of life, appear and guide me in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, whenever I get to the crossroad of life, appear and guide me. Appear and guide me in the name of Jesus. Appear and guide me in the name of Jesus. Whenever I get to the crossroad of life, oh God, my Father, appear and guide me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. One major mistake of your destiny is for you to get to the crossroads of life and decide to seek for a satanic priest 
or a satanic helper, or a satanic halter, or a satanic sacrifice, is a mistake of life. I want to pray for yourself. Say, by the power of God, I will not seek the help of Satan for this journey of my life. In the name of Jesus. By the power of God, I will not seek the help of Satan for this journey of my life. In the name of Jesus. By the power of God, I will not seek the help of Satan. I will not seek the help of any satanic altar. I will not seek the help of any satanist for this my journey of life. I will not seek the help of any idol for this journey of life. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Beloved, one of the benefits that we have as children of God is that we have a father who said, call upon me in the days of trouble and I will answer you. Pray for yourself. Say, oh God, my father, in the day of trouble, empower me to call upon you. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, my father, in the day of trouble, empower me to call upon you. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, my father, in the day of trouble, empower me to call upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Beloved, Many people fail at the crossroad of life because it is when they get to the crossroad of life, the evil habits of their life will manifest. Some people get to the crossroad of life, they look for alcohol and they start to drink themselves to stop them. Some people get to the crossroad of life, it is then they start to fight, cause people. Evil habits. And the more these evil habits manifest, the more separated they are from God who can help them. I want you to quickly pray this into your life. Say any evil habit, any evil habit. assigned to separate me from God. As I pray now, die in my life. In the name of Jesus. Any evil habit Aside to separate me from God as I pray now, die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Any evil habit aside to separate me from God as I pray now, die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say, at the crossroad of life, I will not fail, for my God will guide me. In the name of Jesus, at the crossroad of life, I will not fail, for my God will guide me. In the name of Jesus, at the crossroad of life, I will not fail, for my God will guide me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for everyone that is part of this program today. Your destiny will not be wasted. Amen. Hear this very well. Let the mark of the blood of Jesus come over your life. Amen. In your physical journey, higher than a sin, you will not meet them. Amen. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. In your physical journey, kidnappers will be will be cleared away from the road whenever you are traveling in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your physical journey, armed robbers will not locate your place in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will arrest them Amen. and they will not be able to get to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In this journey of life, I pray for every one of us. You will not be deceived. Amen. Amen. The children of Satan that have been sent into churches will not confuse you. Amen. You will live your life for heaven's sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. This journey of life, you will not die before your time. Amen. 
you will make heaven. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Beloved, before we share the grace, I have a special prayer request. While we are here in the southern part of Nigeria, there are some Christians in southern Kaduna who are under attack. I want us to close our eyes and pray that God will send help for Christians in southern Kaduna that the enemies are planning to attack. Open your mouth and pray that God will protect them in the name of Jesus. Christians in southern Kaduna, all those who have planned to attack you, let them start to attack themselves and kill themselves in the name of Jesus. The Christians in southern Kaduna, all those who have been planning to attack you, wherever they are, let them start to use their weapons against themselves in the name of Jesus. All those that have planned to murder children of God in northern Nigeria, start to murder yourself in the name of Jesus. I ask for the fire from heaven. Let the fire and stones from heaven start to kill the jihadists, the satanists who have been killing people in northern Nigeria in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father as a church, we bring your children in northern Nigeria before you. Yes, King of kings, they have shed the blood of some of your children. My Father, arise. Amen. Fight for your people. Amen. Show the enemies that you are God. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, when you get to the crossroads of life, remember God. He's still alive. He's, he's still, he still guides. He's our all-sufficient God. He's not just our Savior. He's mighty to deliver you from that trouble. He's mighty and great to uphold you. Let us share the grace at this time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Before you shout victorious hallelujah three times, I want to make this confession. Say, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Say, my God will guide me. My God will guide me. My God will help me. My God will help me. My God will show me the way I should go. My God will show me the way I should go. When I get to the crossroads of life. When I get to the So shout three victorious hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Thank God.